I'm back. Uh, I'm super happy because the turtle is back. I'm super happy because uh, the turtle from yesterday is back. If you want to see pictures, they are on my Discord server. And she arrived back now. Uh, she she went like... Uh... <laughs> Thank you, Medipruskum. I will go put on a mask now. Uh, she arrived... Uh... I don't know. She just left yesterday. And today she is back again in, in our garden. And I'm so happy because I love... Uh... I love little turtles. Well, tortoises actually, because uh, tortoise is like land and turtle is sea, I think. Okay, I will go grab the mask. Okay, so, I suppose you can still hear me okay, although of course my voice will very likely sound a little bit muffled. Uh, Arish. So, uh, she wants to drink with us wine, because she has a bottle of wine. I don't know, like, and we know that she's dying because of her... Uh, Condition that makes her bald. She's actually wearing a wig. I think that's skin cancer or something like that. Are you sure you can drink in your condition? It won't make me any worse, that's for sure. I'm not on any cancer medication. I feel good. The way I see it, so, I haven't got much time left, so I might as well make the most of it. That yeah. makes sense, I suppose. We can yeah, have she a drink is. if you like. Great! I'll bring the wine. She has cancer, but does nothing about it. It's one of those bottles with a cork. Have you got a bottle opener, Miss Ashworth? Yes, we do. In the kitchen. I'll go get it, shall I? Yes, please. And while you're there, could you get a couple of glasses too? Death is nothing. Ah, leave, let me read it. God damn it! I wanted to read the. I wanted to read the th the thing. Uh. Do you remember how many minutes is the is the Radim Medipluscum? She reminds me of myself when I was younger. I'm not sure if I can I can fully trust her, but so far she seems genuine. Which is what parasites look like. Five minutes. Oh wow, okay. Thank you. Uh that's a lot. <laughs> but I'm used to wearing a mask eight hours for my job, so it's like it's okay. Uh, maybe I will give her a chance. Talk to. I don't think we should because we need to go grab the wine. Okay, so, uh, was it here? Maybe it was here? No, it wasn't here. Okay. Kettle, microwave open, cupboard. Take corkscrew. I have to turn off the light switch every time. Is there a light switch here somewhere? The light is already off. Okay, good. Let's talk to her now. Have you found that corkscrew yet? We'll also need some wine oh, I forgot about the wine glasses. Oops. We need to get the wine glasses, which are here on this cupboard. Uh, cabinet, sorry. Take wine glasses. One for me, one for Mitzi. Okay. Oh, are you serious right now? She's literally here. Okay. I found some wine glasses. Great. Now all we need is a corkscrew. Which I have here. <laughs> Use? Okay. 
There you go. Let's get that bottle open. All right. That's all we need. Oh, Miss Ashworth, I really must say this before we start. When yeah? I get drunk. I promise I won't cut your throat when you're asleep. Okay, that's also worth. Very funny, Mitzi. Oh, no, I mean it. That's fine. But just so you know... Good that you mean I it. I always sleep with my eyes open. Uh, the big C. Oh, yeah, that's cancer. Okay, <laughs> I was like, what is the big C? Uh, okay, that's info I already knew. Oz is streaming. Okay. It's not raining anymore. How are, how are you planning to find this guy? How are you planning to find this guy? I don't know yet. A bit of detective work, perhaps. It shouldn't be that hard, really. There are only eight apartments here. One is yours. That leaves us with seven. I was hoping that you uh, could give me a hand, actually. You know some of your neighbors, don't you? Not many. I never really cared about them. They changed over the years, too. You probably also figured by now that this is not the sort of place where new neighbors are greeted with a freshly baked cake. You see a new face, you give them a blank stare as you pass them in the hall, and you forget about them a minute later. That bad, eh? Well, there's that bull guy who lives above me in flat five. He came here recently to shout in my face. He's a nasty piece of work, but I really don't think he's the person you're looking for. What does he do for a living? I think he's a train driver. I can't With imagine somehow that my guy would be a train driver. Okay, <laughs> that's good. Leaves us with just six. Anyone okay, else so... I'd have to think. You know, maybe not tonight. Let's just talk about something else, okay? I have plenty of time. There's no need to rush this. Maybe tomorrow we could sit down together and make a plan. Hmm. I could draw a simple map of a building and with your help, mark down who lives where. Sounds good to me, Mitzi. What if I do... Well, no, I, can't, I cannot do that because it would... It would just... Never mind. Uh, I wanted to, like, cut that... that, that uh, wait, what? Oh, yeah, that. <laughs> that part of the screen, the... Um, this, this black part here. And also this this part here to move the whole screen there so that I could be like here on the on the right without blocking anything but that that would require me to be able to touch OBS but whenever I alt tap from the game the game crashes let's talk about so cancer instead the big C want to talk about it well to be honest I didn't really want to tell you about it like that I put you in a very difficult position, I know. It's just that I was really desperate to get this room. I hope you can understand. Why? This is the last and most important thing I must do before my time is up. Everything she it's says fun. is like... You seem alright. It's just... I find also, it hard why, to trust what the hell is these this? days. Maybe it's time I opened my eyes to see others have problems too. What is Some, this? Some, like yourself, even bigger than mine. What kind of cancer is it? Do you mind me asking? Brain tumor. Her name is glioblastoma. Brain tumor? Uh, yep, they're all girls, the way I imagine it. Just look at their names. Lymphoma, melanoma, <laughs> myeloma, leukemia, sarcoma. Each of them a fucking goddess of death. Beautiful and ruthless. Where does the Queen of Maggots? Mm. You might just be right about that, Mitzi. Fall into. I used to be a nurse. I know a few things about cancer. And I know glioblastoma. She's a real bitch. Yeah, and yet she gets to be the prom queen before night ends while I disappear down the back exit. How long? They said I had a year. But that was six months ago, so... Yeah, not awfully long. Is there anything? They've tried. I'm hmm. sorry. Yeah. Wow. 
So am I. Oh, now we talk about even, something else. Now even um, to the to the big list of triggering topics, we have to add uh, chronic deadly illnesses. Yay, fun! Oh, it's not raining anymore. Oh well, I don't mind rain. Sometimes I even like it. Sometimes. Interesting. But according to weather forecast, there's a nasty fog coming. Now that I'm actually scared of. I got lost in a fog once when I was just nine or ten. Okay, yeah, from trauma. It's normal. I remember I sat under a tree crying, thinking some monster would appear right in front of me and drag me away. But now that you're a big girl, you know there are no monsters. Mm. Yeah? How do you know? <laughs> uh... I've never seen one, nor has anyone else. Really? That seems like... This seems to the Maybe you're right. Okay, Maybe this you're one. Right. Yeah. I will believe in them when I see one. With this fog approaching fast, you might be in luck, Miss Ashworth. <laughs> I am so glad I'm not spending another night outside. I might be a big girl now, but... There will always be a part of me that is frightened, I guess. Seek fluid intake. Did you know they actually have a How? name for it? It's called <laughs> homiclophobia. Fear of fog. We are living in crazy times, Mitzi. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the hydrate. I really should hydrate. Ah, everyone in chat should hydrate too. Don't forget that water is good for your body. And your body, healthy, is good for your mind. You mentioned a boyfriend. Tell me something about him. Yeah, okay. Let's talk about him. Yeah, Thanks okay. Jack. <laughs> He's dead. Oh. Miss Ashworth, are you sure you want to listen about my miserable life? I don't want to bring you down. These aren't happy stories. And I'm not a happy stories kind of person. I'm sure you've noticed by now. I guess so. Anyway, I suppose I would have had to tell you about Jack sooner or later. After all, he is the main reason I'm here. Hmm. I just don't know where to start. He has an interesting life. Like, she's dying, her boyfriend is dead, and he's trying to find some kind of dude who. Oh, wait, five minutes already passed. Okay. Uh, I checked the clock when it was 55, and now it's. Um, now it's all one so okay so uh and, and she's dying her boyfriend is dead and she's looking for a dude that she met on the internet and that she doesn't know who it is where he is he had to she had to track him down and we still don't know why is he looking for him why is she looking for him i don't know how did he take the news about your cancer? Jack made those pictures on the wall. Was he an artist? How did he die? Mm, this is a bad question, but I guess it's better off if we start with the bad things first. How did he die? How did he die? I'll get to that, Miss Ashworth. Let me just tell you more about him first, so you could understand what happened. Okay. Tell me how you two met. Oh, we knew each other for like forever. We grew up on the same street. Interesting. It's funny how we seem to be made for each other. A perfect match. Both dying. I always knew he was the guy for me, and I'm sure he never doubted that either. Jack was absolutely crazy about me. We thought one day we would marry, have children, be happy. Myth of romantic love. I never had many friends because I had Jack. I didn't need anybody else. You know, if there's one thing I'm really Did grateful have for friends? in my life, it's that I got to experience this pure, perfect love. Some people go through a lifetime without knowing how it feels. I guess I've been very lucky. We are all lucky all in lucky some parts. Sometimes. And unlucky in others. 
Jack made those pictures on your wall. Was he an artist? He always liked all kinds of morbid stuff, whether it was music, movies, paintings. So do I, really. We had that in common, amongst other things. People say it's depressing to listen to sad songs or watch sad films. But I never felt that way. That's why I'm playing yet, this game. You are scared of fog. Oh, that's different. I might be scared of fog, but I like spiders. They're beautiful. You must be out of your mind, Mitzi. No, honestly, there's a certain indescribable beauty in sadness. Just like there's beauty in the grey and ugly winter morning when you look past the obvious and notice what others can't see. You must love my apartment then. It's like ugly took a vacation here and never went home again. Wow. I wouldn't see that sadness has indescribable beauty. Sadness just makes you see the world from other perspective. Like, you cannot be happy without knowing sadness, so you need to know sadness in order to be happy, if you know what I mean. So, like, knowing and experiencing depressing, depressing kinds of arts, like, like sad art, sad movies, sad video games, sad books, makes you appreciate more what you have. And uh, also makes you be prepared for the possible sources of sadness, if that makes sense. How did he take the news about your cancer? He thought I was joking at first. Oh. He laughed. And he got really angry. And then died. I swore to him I was serious, but he still wouldn't believe me. We had a big fight that night. It was our first and only fight. But it was awful. He smashed some stuff. His guitar, of all things, was the worst. He loved that guitar. Why did he break it? He was absolutely furious. He walked out on me that night, and when he came back the next day, he was different. He begged me to try surgery and chemotherapy. I didn't really want those things, but I did the chemo for him. It didn't help. It just made me feel sick all the time. I felt trapped up, hey. in a strange place where nothing that happened around me seemed real. Mm. Maybe that's why I didn't see what my cancer was doing to Jack, and it was destroying him as well. He changed. He became obsessed with death. It seemed death was all he ever thought about, even though it was me, not him, who was supposed to die. Wow, that's actually really deep, like... When, when, when the most important person for you in your life is dying, then it feels worse than death for you. And I can imagine him having death anxiety. Death anxiety basically means obsessed with death. Like, it, those two things are interconnected because if you have death anxiety, you're obsessed with it because it literally is all you can think about. You are so scared of it that, that you're obsessed with it, if that makes sense. Like, you cannot forget about it or stop thinking about it. Obsession doesn't have to be something that you like or that you appreciate. Or it. If you have a phobia, you're, you have basically an obsession with that thing. I, 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 I know at least one person who has death anxiety. Although that's not for the same reason as, as Jack How got it. How did he die? How did Jack die? He was so distant the last few weeks before. Before he died. What I didn't know was that he kept looking for something. I don't think he even knew what exactly. But it eventually found him. Or rather, he found him. There are those forums online, you know, about all sorts of stuff. Fishing, computer games, horses, gambling, addictions. Life streams. Everything, really. Accidentally, Jack stumbled upon one about suicide. There's a guy there. Calls himself the Eye of Adam. He's a fucking god on that forum. Imagine being... It's like a failed suicide club. 
people mostly try to help each other and okay. support. If it's support. Sometimes it just helps to know there are others like you. To listen to their stories and, and how they cope with their lives. Okay. But the eye of Adam is an advocate of death. Okay, that's a problem. That's a big problem. Weakness. His job is to plant an idea. To give them a reason to die and tell them how to do it. Once and for good. Jack took the bait. Before he knew, he was completely brainwashed. One day, he sat down with me and tried to explain his perfect solution. It was the Romeo and Juliet kind of scenario. We were both to die together in each other's arms. It was supposed to be a quick and foolproof death. There was no chance we would have been saved. All thanks to the Eye of Adam, who created a tool for perfect suicide. He told me it was very simple. All we needed were two easily accessible household chemicals, which combined together create gas called hydrogen sulfide that kills you within a and couple of minutes. And that's toxic. I told him he was fucking nuts, of course, but he just wouldn't give up. Sulfur with me, most things is toxic. He begged, and eventually just kept screaming at me. I figured it was his crazy idea of a modern romance. But it was downright tacky and just wrong. Finally, he said he would get everything ready and wait for me in our special place at dawn. Five in the morning. Don't be late. Those were his last words he said to me. Then he stormed out. I cried for hours, thinking I, I didn't deserve all that from the person I love most in the whole world. A few times I even tried to persuade myself that maybe he was right and I should do it. I just couldn't. I eventually fell asleep. I didn't plan it. My head was killing me. I was so tired. I woke up suddenly. I could see the sun rising out my window. It was nearly five. In utter panic, I threw myself off the bed and ran out the door. I needed to stop him. I needed to get there before it was too late. It was too late. But right there in my bedroom, before I even left, I already knew it was. When I arrived at our wow. special place, it was already bright. We used to go there in the past, drink wine, sometimes smoke weed and listen to Pink Floyd, sometimes make love in Jack's car. There wasn't really anything special about that old park lot. But to us there was. It was completely abandoned. It was quiet. It was safe. After that day I've never gone there again. Wait, so we are playing now? Yeah, we are. Ooh, that was a story and a half. Like... Imagine being an advocate of death? In a suicide forum? Like, that forum must be unmoderated. Wow, like... I don't know, I just... I try to, to imagine, like, some kind of forum like that. For sure there are, but a supportive uh, a support forum where there is a guy who who is um, like supportive of death. I don't know. It's, that's like really weird. Also, wh why 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 is this happen? Like like what what is this for? I don't know. I'm, I I keep looking at it because it's just next to my monitor. <laughs> Sorry. 